you know, this is one of these things. You can go, you can read in Scientific American the responses to, to this stuff. You know, what can I just say? You've got professional geologists who work for oil and coal companies, and trust me, they don't buy into this flood thing. And the people, the poor miners who are stuck hundreds of feet underground in the, in the coal ac mine accident recently in, uh, in Pennsylvania, probably were, would be a little puzzled to learn how that coal got placed hundreds of feet underground, right? So, and, and in such thick layers, as he says. So, you know, I, I just, I'm, a, I'm always amazed by the creationists who are all of a sudden instant experts on things I wouldn't even pretend to be an expert about. Geology, oil geology, coal geology. Now, you know, we had this little dis discussion earlier about who do you trust. Uh, I didn't wear my button. I was tempted. I have a big button that says, trust me, I'm a scientist. And I thought that little bit of self humor might not have been understood. But, you know, at some point in time, you either have to believe one or two things. Either all of the scientists that study all of these various aspects of the natural world have somehow lost their collective minds or intelligence or they're part of some conspiracy, they're afraid of losing their jobs. I don't know what all, but there they are. They're publishing articles every week. Thousands of articles come out, all of which are consistent with the same evolutionary picture. And apparently they're just all deluded. I don't know what else to say. But I can't sit up here, you know, the, the, the creationists will come out, because they, they ignore any real facts, and they'll come out with some hypothetical that can be easily, easily disproved, but not by me at this instance, because what do you have to do? You have to study geology. You have to study paleontology. You have to study genetics and molecular biology and anatomy and astronomy, okay? And I actually happen to trust most of those people that publish in those areas. I think they're probably pretty smart guys and pretty decent scientists. And I trust them a hell of a lot more than I trust creationists who's never specialized in any of those fields. Okay, we have a, another question for Dr. Weisenberg here, and uh, the question is, in, in his uh, presentation, Dr. Hoven used facts to disprove evolution. He used, um, he, he used, uh, please be quiet. He used, he used, he used um, the facts to disprove evolution, and according to the scientific method, if the, if the facts that are found disprove the hypothesis, the hypothesis is supposed to be thrown out. So if, if these facts do truly disprove evolution, then it doesn't, according to the scientific method, it should be thrown out. Oh, absolutely. If the facts disprove evolution, I'll abandon it in a microsecond, okay? Uh, I didn't hear any facts disproving evolution. I didn't hear a single fact disproving evolution. And he made some statements about trees and rock and, and embedded, like a few, I, I don't know anything about trees and rocks. I'm not a, 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 a geologist that studies trees and rocks. And neither is he. And neither is he. And, and, you know, the fact of the matter is the people who do the geology, right, have developed those time scales based upon a variety of evidence. You know, I would have happily, happily, I'll tell you what, here's the deal, all right? I'll give him an I'll, axe and a shovel, and he can, and I'll take him up to a place where there's fossil beds of trilobites dating back, well, say, 500 million years ago, all right? If he can find a single more advanced form of life in that fossil bed, a bony fish, a clam, I mean, I'm not asking for anything very fancy. Plain old clam will do it. Any old fish. If he could find in that fossil bed, clearly marine aquatic deposit. I mean, you can't argue these guys are not aquatic creatures. If he could find a single, just one, embedded in that rock, hey, I'll abandon evolution. Right on the spot. Okay? And you know what? Go for it. Do it. But no, they don't, creationists don't have that kind of evidence. They never will because they're, they're wrong. That's all. Yeah. All right.
Well, I think you need to be reading some of the same scientific, scientific literature uh, because these type of things have been found frequently, and I can get into that in a minute. But Darwin said, if my theory be true, then numberless intermediate varieties must have existed. You've stated several times tonight that there are thousands of missing links. Um, this textbook says, since Darwin, many of these links have been found. Today, Darwin's theory is almost universally accepted by scientists. Uh, but David Ropp said, <coughs> who's a famous evolutionist, uh, in the years after Darwin, his advocates hoped to find predictable progressions. In general, these have not been found. Yet the optimism has died hard, and some pure fantasy has crept into textbooks. Berlinski said, there are gaps in the fossil graveyards, places where there should be intermediate forms, but where there is nothing whatsoever instead. No paleontologist writing in English, French, or German denies that this is so. This is simply a fact. Darwin's theory and the fossil record are in conflict. Um, according to Stephen Gould at Harvard, and arthropods are the largest animal group. Where did they come from? What's their origin? As Darwin noted in The Origin of Species, the abrupt emergence of arthropods in the fossil record during the Cambrian presents a problem for evolutionary biology. There are no obvious simpler or intermediate forms, either living or in the fossil record. American scientist. Where did the fossil fish come from? Yet the transitions from spineless invertebrates to the first backboned fishes is still shrouded in mystery, and many theories abound. Where did the birds come from? The true origin of birds is still up in the air, Alan Fiducia says. He's an atheist and or ornithologist at uh, uh, North Carolina Duke University, I think, or one of the universities in North Carolina. Okay, what about whales? Competence Encyclopedia, 96, said the evolutionary origin of whales remains controversial among zoologists. What about flowering plants? The origin of the angiosperms, an abominable mystery to Darwin, remains so 100 years later and is little better today. Both the origin of life and the origin of major groups of animals remains unknown. So if you're telling us there are fossil intermediates, you are either confused by something somebody told you, or you're deliberately lying to these students because the experts say there are not intermediate fossils. Okay? Now, Luther Sunderland was asked, asked the question to many major paleontologists, where is the evidence for evolution? You mentioned you would take us to a museum and see one, okay? The largest museum in the world, the largest fossil collection in the world, is the British Museum of Natural History. Colin Patterson was the curator of the fossil collection. Quarter million fossils on display. Luther Sunderland asked Colin Patterson, he said, Mr. Patterson, I read your book about evolution, but I noticed you didn't show us any intermediate fossils. You didn't show us any missing links. Where are they? Here was Patterson's response. I fully agree with your comments on the lack of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any, fossil or living, I would certainly have included them. I will lay it on the line, there is not one such fossil. Yeah. Now you students, listen carefully. Don't believe a professor that tells you there are missing links. There aren't any. The whole chain is missing, okay? Stephen Gould said the absence of fossil evidence is a problem for evolution. Yeah, I guess it is. They got a great theory. They like the theory. If only we had the evidence. Stephen That's why guys like Richard evolution. Goldschmidt, uh, Joe, yeah. Joe, you invited me to speak and invited him to speak, okay? Would you get, take care of this uh, person who can't control himself, okay? If you want to get your own crowd, you go get your own crowd, okay? But you are not the speaker tonight, so shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> Richard, Richard Goldschmidt said 50, 60 years ago, the first bird hatched from a reptilian egg. Stephen Gould and Niles Eldridge have resurrected this stupid idea with the new theory called punctuated equilibrium, which basically is the same thing with a new coat of paint on it. 